G'day, it's Rob here again. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, a Mitsu Toyo dial indicator that I bought. Um, I got it down at a local flea market, Trash and Treasure. Um, it's the current range of Mitsu Toyo 50mm um, dial indicators. Um, it works perfectly. It's a uh, a 2045S, which uh, basically means it's, it has it's the model with 5mm of travel. They do a 2046S, which has 10mm, uh, but 5 is OK. And uh, I picked this up at the uh, flea market um, for $5. If you buy that new, um, it would cost you $60. So it was a, <laughs> it was a bargain. Uh, the only thing wrong with it is it's got a crack in the in the crystal um, face cover, and uh, on the old Mitsutoyos it used to be a bit of an issue um, that you to replace that crystal you actually have to have a lens press to um, to press in the to press in the uh, the new crystal because. Uh, it is a, um, a flat uh, crystal and it has to be curved to fit in the actual bezel. Um, and that's why over time with the old ones, the plastic gets a set in it or the crystal gets a set in it and the lenses can fall out. Uh, with a new generation of Michitoyo, and to their credit, it's a good idea, you now get a replacement. You can buy the replacement bezel with the crystal in it all as one unit. And a replacement crystal a bezel was ten dollars, which, considering it's a Mitsu Toyo, it's good quality. I think it's pretty good value. And these uh, these just clip on. So uh, we're going to now uh, take off the old uh, bezel and put on the new one. And considering I've never done this before, it'll be interesting to see how well it works out. If it works out well, the whole thing will have cost me fifteen dollars which is still a lot cheaper than $60, so we'll see how we get on. To do this, the first thing you have to do is mount the, uh, the dial indicator in, a, in the vise. Um, and we don't want to mark it, so as uh, my vise has got serrated jaws, I use a couple of um, metal uh, jaw protectors or jaw guards I suppose you call them and uh, they know me to put stuff in the vise without marking it they're pretty beat up, I've used them for a long time but they they work well now when you stick this uh, indicator in you, you really want to keep it up this end and mount it on a clamp at the back just do it up firm but don't go mad right now the, the indicator hand is pointing it back out that way and what we have to do is we have to lever, we have to prise off the, the cover, tipping it back this way. So we'll see how we go. Oh, piece of cake. How easy was that? So that came off with the indexing disc in it. Easy as anything. All right. Well, that bit, that bit of the operation went all right. Now we'll see about the indexing disc, um, how we go getting that out. Right, now to get the indexing disc out, well, I should imagine that just clicks in. So if we get our fingernails under the edge of it, oh, look at that, easy as winking. So, we've got the indexing disc out. That's the old cracked lens. And now we have to put the indexing disc in the, the new lens, or the new bezel, I should say. To do that, we need to put it on something soft so we don't mark it. So I'll use my, I'll use my hanky, which is clean. So we'll tip it over this way. And the indexing scale should just clip straight in, put it in on. just push down on it mm -hmm. 
seems to be in. Didn't feel it click, but it it's in. So that's uh, that's all done. Right. So the next job will be to put it back on the on the dial indicator body. Right. Well, to put the the new bezel with the indexing disc in it back on the uh, on the main body, we just reverse the procedure where we took it off. Now this face plate has got two little studs here that it has to uh, line up on and that's that's okay. So all we have to do is put the needle between the, the crystal and the indexing disc and feed it back on. This is what we're doing, coming in from this direction. Get that end on first. Oh, look at that. How good is that? Perfect. So that's all it took. Now we put our, our little uh, indexing stops on. They just, they just clip on. And uh, we're good to go. I've got another one here somewhere. Where is it? I've got a couple of spares sent across with this and I can put two on because these I've got actually got two of these gauges but these indicators that only have one only have one uh, actual clip on them so well it's handy to have two that way you can measure the uh, the movement better and they just clip on right here we go fifteen dollar Mitsu Toyo perfect absolutely brilliant so that whole thing cost me fifteen dollars which is pretty damn good as you can see it's virtually only very light marking on the back so there it was it was as easy as that piece of cake and it's certainly something anybody can do that's using the current range of Mitsu Toyo and uh, yeah I think Mitsu Toyo should be congr congratulated on uh, making it easy because if anything's going to get damaged on these uh, indicators there's always the lens cops it and uh, Apart from that, um, it, you know, they're going to sail through most uh, work situations okay. So there you go, good as new again. All right, shows you how simple it is. I hope you found it interesting. See you next time.